Now let's start with the final topic of this chapter, the variational principle. Um, this is the hydrogen molecule ion H2+. Like we consider two hydrogen atoms, so two protons and two electrons, and we remove one an electron from this, and it becomes a hydrogen molecule ion. And this topic is very interesting, and uh, a lot of mathematics is involved in this one, especially in solving the integrations. Uh, but we will not go into the very uh, detailed integration, the very detailed mathematics in this topic, while you will get the all the derivations, all the required derivations step by step in the lecture notes to which I will provide a link in the download. So what is a hydrogen molecule ion? Uh, let's consider here we are having two protons and those protons are fixed at a distance r. So they are not moving, they are not contributing to the kinetic energy term. Because when we use the variational principle, in variational principle we write energy of a system. So the Hamiltonian we write in it is a kinetic energy plus potential energy. So here the only moving thing is the electron which is a distance r1 from electron from uh, one proton and it r2 from another proton and we will get the upper bound to the ground state energy and the ground state energy will be like that if i consider this then this is a hydrogen atom and this is the presence of one proton there so it can be considered that way as well. Now we consider the variational principle and we will consider the upper bound uh, to the ground state energy in this. Now what if the energy of the system like the ground state energy of the neutral hydrogen atom in the presence of one close proton, if the energy of this system falls below or becomes less than that situation, the neutral hydrogen atom in the presence of a proton, then it means bonding has occurred. And this we will prove quantum mechanically. So first understand the geometry that here we are having a fixed uh, distance between the protons although we will come to know at the end of this that varying this R is playing a critical role and the Oppenheimer approximation which is this variation of R we will discuss that one as well. But what is the role being played by this electron when it will go closer to one proton and the other proton, whether it gets its binding because this electron is equally treated by the two protons. So how the bonding occurs and if the energy will come out to be negative or less than the neutral setup, then it means that bonding has occurred in this situation. So we will uh, utilize um, the variational principle like writing the Hamiltonian, then the, uh, the kinetic energy term in it, the potential energy term in it, the potential energy will be just the Coulombic potential energy term. And when we complete the Hamiltonian, we will have to minimize that Hamiltonian as we are usually doing in the variational principle. So uh, we will uh, start with this and we will uh, consider the Hamiltonian for this system. The other thing is what kind of trial wave function we will have to take. So the trial wave function in this situation is very critical. And what we are going to do, we will take the trial wave function of a neutral hydrogen atom, like the earlier case is we have done uh, treated in chapter four, 
the hydrogen atom. So we will take the trial wave function which with some constant and uh, then e to the power minus r over a r being the distance between it and a being the Bohr radius. So we will uh, consider that exponentially decaying function here and uh, it will have a normalization constant. We will normalize that when we can uh, find out the thing. But there will be actually two uh, wave functions, one on R1 and the other on R2, and we will consider their interaction as well. And that will play a key role over here. We will have a set of equations there will be one integral will be converted into three more integrals in each of those three integrals will be converted into another three integrals and those three into another three integrals so there is a huge mathematics involved here but i will try to uh, focus more on the topic and the concept behind this one while uh, up to some extent when I will move the integral I will just write its solution and the step-by-step -step solution you will get in the lecture notes. So let's start with the, this one and here we have the Hamiltonian for this system is H equals minus h bar square over 2m del square and minus the this is the kinetic energy term and this is the potential energy term minus e square over 4 pi epsilon naught and 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 so it is like minus e square over 4 pi epsilon naught 1 over r1 minus 1 over um, r2 with this one. So we have the first term which is basically the kinetic energy term. This is the kinetic energy term and this is the potential energy term. Here why we are having only one kinetic energy term because there is only one electron which is in motion and that is causing the kinetic energy term here which is here while the two protons are uh, dealt is fixed. The two potential energy terms here for R1 and R2, the reason behind that one is that we are treating the two protons the same and each proton has the equal chance to interact with this electron. So this is the kinetic energy term and the potential energy terms and our goal is to find out the uh, ground upper bound to the ground state energy in this uh, situation. So going to the trial wave function sine naught of R the trial wave function we will take is that of hydrogen atom and sine naught of R is of this form which we have studied earlier pi a cube in a square root e to the power minus r over a, a being the Bohr radius while r the distance between the electron and proton in a hydrogen atom. So with this we just uh, the composition of according to our geometry based on such a wave function. So we will have the one proton with the electron and then another proton with the electron. So our trial wave function will be something like this that psi is equal to a times psi naught of r1 and plus psi naught of R2. Where is the normalization constant? We are having the linear combination of the two wave functions 
and then we will treat uh, their situation uh, which is the quantum chemist call is the LCAO technique so we will uh, proceed here is uh, by considering their interaction in psi so the very first thing is that we will consider the integration means we will consider to find out the normalization constant so this will be that psi mod square means principally this psi mod square and d cube r should be equal d cube r should be equal to 1 so i am writing here this implies that 1 is equal what should be psi mod square i have to take the mod square of this and the mod square of this will be it will become a mod square and then i consider each of them and we have the psi mod square of this plus psi mod square of this so integral and psi naught r1 mod square d cube r1 and plus another will be of psi naught r2 and d cube r2 and plus the next term which will be means it will be two times because psi naught r1 and psi naught r2 then psi naught r2 and psi naught r1 so is this we are considering the two protons to be symmetric they are dealing with the electron equally so i can write that this is is two times of psi naught r1 and psi naught r2 and then we have the d cube r1 and the d cube r2 with this but at the moment i am writing let's say only d cube r i am writing i can write d cube r1 and d cube r2 so uh, it's the same thing same representation if i write d cube r r is basically then composed of r1 and r2 so let me write this thing d cube r1 and d cube r2 here and finally we will have to close this one and let me call this is equation one so this is our equation one we will uh, see here in this equation that psi naught r1 mod square intrinsically the psi naught function the psi naught wave function is normalized so it will give us one similarly this one is normalized and this will give us another one here but this term which is the the combination of the two wave functions psi naught psi uh, naught r1 and psi naught r2 which we also call the overlap integral terms because here they are overlapping and we will have to find out this thing and let me call this integral is i integral and we will have to find out this i integral because this we know this is one this is one so one plus one is two and one two here and then when we find out this one then it will be we will put in this equation and we will get the normalization constant here so let's start with the finding out this integral which i can write in simple form is the i integral is equal to in bracket notation i can write it is psi naught r1 and psi naught r2 this is in the bracket notation while in the integral form i will write this one is 1 over 
phi a cube from here because this is psi naught 1 pi a cube with psi naught r1, 1 pi a cube with psi naught r2. So it will come out to be this and then the integral and we are having e to the power minus r1 over a, e to the power minus r2 over a and then its integration d cube r. r it is also uh, it is it is convenient to write this in terms of d cube r because then r is having both the r1 and the r2 in it let's say we call this is our equation 2 here